Hello again to all you artists out there who are tuning in today. It's time to stop, drop, and art. It's December and it's not snowing yet, but a couple days ago it was really frosty. I went for a walk in the forest when I got up and it was beautiful. There was frost on the leaves and on the grass, but there was also some ice on the bridge that I had to walk across. So I had to be real careful. It was slippery. But today we are going to paint a picture of a dog in a snowy forest. The dog is gonna be real small and the trees are gonna be real big. And we're only gonna see the dog from the back, but it's gonna be a cool picture, you'll see. So this project can be done with watercolors or acrylic paint, or if you would prefer, you could just use crayons or colored pencils if that's what you'd rather do. First thing we're going to do is draw our picture. So we're going to put a snowy hill and it's going to just be a curved line. It goes from one side of the paper to the other. See that curve? And it's below the halfway mark. Let's say that's about halfway on our paper. It's just a little below that. You don't want it to be way up here because you want to draw your trees. So for our trees, we're gonna keep it real simple. We're gonna make two trees to start out with. And we're just gonna make two tall trunks that come down like that. We're gonna make it real easy. So I just have two parallel lines going from the top of the page, just down below this curved line a little bit. One, two. And I'm gonna do two more over here. I'm gonna leave a space in between because that's where my little dog is gonna sit. So over here, I'm gonna do another line that's vertical, going almost straight up and down. Strong, tall tree trunks. All right. Now I'm just gonna give them real simple roots. I'm just gonna kind of go like that. You can make your roots fancier if you want, but I'm keeping mine real simple. And that's all I'm gonna do for the trees. So, we'll erase those lines later. So for the dog, he's gonna be sitting right here and I want his head and his ears to be below the line of the hill. So I have to put his body kind of down here. So we're just gonna make a shape. The dog is sitting down, looking out at the forest between the two trees. So I'm gonna make this kind of potato jelly bean kind of shape here. It's kind of a little wider at the bottom than it is at the top. It's kind of a rectangle with curved corners, but it's a little narrower at the top or kind of like a candy corn a little bit. <laughs> so that's the shape we're making for our dog's body. Now we're gonna give him some ears. Just wait, it'll look like a dog in a moment. His ears are pointy. I believe he is a border collie. His ears are kind of pointy up like this and he's listening. You know when you're in the forest and it's snowy, it's so quiet. Maybe he's listening to hear what he can hear in the quiet. And we're gonna, so we're just gonna give him two little triangle ears and then this part is gonna be black also. So we'll erase that line in a minute. And then his tail is just gonna be off to the side like this, lying in the snow. And I might give him a little bit of a, a little more of a haunch right there. Maybe a little more of a haunch right there too. And there's gonna be a line here. So his head is gonna be white. And this part of his body is gonna be black. Now I'm gonna erase some lines that we don't need. So we aren't going to need any of these lines here because we're going to do that whole thing black and we're not going to want these lines inside of his ears. Well, see he's pointing, he's looking away from us out between those two trees. Maybe there's something out there. Maybe there's a deer or something that he can sense. All right, we're not done yet. Oh. I was gonna erase these lines, huh? 
the hill goes right through my trees, but my trees should not have a line going through them. So we're gonna make shadows. This is gonna make our picture look really cool. We want shadows for the trees and the dog, but we don't want them to be perfectly straight. We want them to be slanted, going off kind of like, if the sun is coming from this way, the sun is probably behind the snowy clouds, but a little bit of light is shining through. It's shining through and it's making the tree shadows go that way. So I'm gonna make a slanted line that goes all the way off the page like that and then another one like that so they're two pretty much parallel lines but they're slanted and they're slanting in that same direction now this tree we want the shadow to slant the same direction so can you do that we want it to be about the same slant as the other tree it doesn't have to be perfectly straight because sometimes shadows are a little bit wiggly, aren't they? And then the dog is gonna have a shadow too. His tail is gonna have a little bit of a shadow. And then his shadow is gonna go the same direction as the trees. Shadows can be very long. I think we are ready to start painting. That's all the drawing we're going to do. The rest we're gonna do with our paintbrush or if you wanna do it with colored pencils or crayons, that's okay. So I'm gonna do mine with watercolor, but you can use acrylic paint if you want. It's up to you or like I said, crayon. The first thing we're going to do is color in the background. And we want it to be kind of a light blue. I think that blue is too dark. I'm gonna get a lighter blue. We want the sky, the forest is a icy blue color. Don't wanna paint the snow. The hill is covered in snow. So we wanna leave that white. We've got this icy blue Forest. Sometimes forests are really dark. So it could be kind of a darkish blue, I guess. It's darker in some places and lighter in others. Just depends on how many trees there are. All right, now while that is a little bit wet, I'm going to take a darker blue and I'm going to make some kind of ghost trees in the background just lines that go straight up and down. Ghost trees. And I might give the ghost trees a few little limbs going off, but those are behind our big trees in the front. We don't want them to come in front of our other trees. Maybe there's a one farther back. So we can see that there's other trees in this forest, not just these two. Okay. If you have a skinny paintbrush, a smaller one, you could make even some different size trees, some little tiny ones if you wanted to, or some little branches. So we have some variety of line. Our lines aren't all thick. Some lines are thin and some lines are thicker. That makes it more interesting, doesn't it? Okay, so now we've got kind of a, a little shadowy forest going on there. And let's go ahead and get the same blue that we use for our sky and let's paint in our shadows. Because sometimes shadows look blue, especially when they're on the white snow. So all of our shadows are gonna be the same blue as the sky of our forest. It's not really a sky, it's more like a, a background of our forest. I need a smaller brush to paint these little corners. That great big brush isn't gonna get into those little corners. So I need a smaller brush to do like around the dog's tail and 
these little roots here, the shadows of the tree roots. All right now I need to let this dry just a little bit because if I try to paint my trees right now, it's gonna blend into the wet background that's blue. So what I think I might do instead is maybe I'll do my dog's ears. Um, probably wanna let that dry just a little bit too, the shadow underneath my dog. But I'm gonna take a small brush and I have some black. I don't know if you have black watercolor paint or acrylic paint or um, colored pencil. But if you don't have black, you could use what you do have. Maybe you have some gray or brown. I think I dripped a little water in my forest, didn't I? If I put lots of water in my watercolor paint, it's very runny. But if I only put a little water, it's darker and thicker and covers more, more um, solidly and completely. But see, I need kind of a small brush to do his tail. I'm gonna outline it first. I need a little more water there. And then I'm gonna paint him. And if you want to, you could do a real thin line around the dog, the parts that are white, the white fur. If you can do that without messing up your dog. Great. There's our dog sitting in the forest, looking off into the forest. He's got his ears pricked up like he hears something. Hmm, what could it be? Okay. I dripped some water right on my little tree there. I'm going to dab that off with a paper towel. Well, maybe this is dry enough now for me to do my trees. I'm going to get a brush wet and then get some black watercolor paint or acrylic paint or a black crayon or a black colored pencil, whatever you have at home. And I'm going to color my trees black, same color as my dog. If you don't have black, like I said with the dog, if all you have is brown, you could do brown. Or maybe you even want to do purple, but it should be a dark color for the trees and the dog's fur. We're really only using like two colors for this whole picture, blue and black. It's amazing what you can do with just two colors. You don't have to have lots of colors to make a nice picture. Some people would say black isn't a color, it's a shade, but it's kind of debatable. All right, I think I want to make my tree trunks a little darker. My watercolor was a little too watered down. I'm gonna add some more paint, less water, more paint. That makes it darker. And you can see my paper's getting a little curly. That happens sometimes with watercolor. All right. I think those tree trunks look pretty good. Could add a little more of a tree root if I wanted to, maybe. Now, I wanna give my trees some branches. So, I think I'll start with the same brush that I use to paint my trees. I'll make a few thick branches and then I'll use a small brush for some thin branches. So I'm just gonna make a few branches. This brush can turn and get skinnier or not. Could do that. You can make your branches however you like. They don't have to be just like mine. And I'm gonna take my skinny branch, my skinny brush and make skinny branches. Just a few here and there. All right, I think I think that's good. 
So now we have our dog in the snowy, quiet forest. And you can just imagine how quiet it is in that forest. But oh, something's missing. The snow. Okay, we have snow on the ground. But I think we want some snow falling. Now, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can take a toothbrush and dip it in wet paint and scratch on it with your finger and splatter paint. But that is so messy. I decided I didn't want to do that. I'm just going to take white acrylic paint. You can't really do this with, um, I don't think it worked too good with watercolor paint, but we're going to take some white acrylic paint and my smallest brush, going to get it clean, it's got black on it still. And I'm going to dip my small brush in my white acrylic paint and I'm just going to put little dots of snow falling from the sky. Some dots can be tiny and some can be bigger. But I'm just using the tip of my brush. I'm not smashing it sideways. I'm holding it straight up and down and just barely touching the paper to make little snowflakes falling from the sky. Now, if you do not, um, even if you colored yours with crayon or colored pencil, if you have a gel pen, maybe you could use a white gel pen or you can use white acrylic paint on top of your crayon or your colored pencil, I'm pretty sure it will work, to put little dots of snow. Just as many as you like, falling in the forest. That just makes it seem even more quiet, doesn't it? Have you ever been in the forest when it was snowing? It's just magical. I have, several times. You just want to make sure that you're bundled up nice and warm where it's not quite as much fun. Oh, I like that much better with the with the snowflakes. And I kind of made a mistake right there, so I can look, I can erase that. If you want, you can cover up if you went over your if your blue paint got on your snow and you want to kind of erase that, you can kind of use that white paint like white out. You don't have to though. Kind of cover that up. Alrighty. Well, there is our dog in the snow. What are you going to name your dog? I think my dog's name is Whisper. It's a very quiet dog, a very thoughtful dog. I don't really know many of those. <laughs> I went and bought some firewood today. So I think I'm going to go start a fire in the fireplace. The first one this year, and I'm going to, I'm going to take Whisper up there. We're just gonna sit by the fire and maybe drink some cocoa and think about snow. I hope you had fun doing this project and I will see you next time.